This show is brought to you by HostBaby.com, web hosting for musicians. Last week on Music Marketing Monday, we talked about how to fan fund without Kickstarter and similar sites. This week, we go all traditional, if you want to call it that, and talk about how to use Kickstarter and these official fan funding and crowdsourcing platforms to earn money for your next musical project. Stay tuned. Information. Inspiration. Motivation for the modern musicpreneur. Time to start your week right. Here it comes. Music Marketing Monday with your host, Bob Baker. Mr. Buzz Factor. And Billy Grisak. The music marketing mind. Ready? Ready? Are you sure? Set. Here it comes. Swing, baby. Angel List, Artist Share, Back to the Future, Circle Up, Crowd Cube, Crowd Supply, Equity Net, Fundable, Fund It By Me, Funder Hut, Fundy. I'm not going to keep reading this darn list. Do you have any idea how many crowdfunding sites are out there? Well, we're going to talk about a few of the best ones and uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly of uh, crowdfunding using a traditional crowdfunding source today. On episode 32, my name is Billy Grizak. I am the music marketing mind, and over there in the corner is... Bob Baker sitting in the corner, also known as Ms. Mr. Buzz Factor, if I can get that out. At least I'm not wearing a dunce cap sitting over in the corner. No, no, that's okay. I'm over in the other corner. See, it's kind of like, you know, like, in this corner. Oh, no. <laughs> We're yeah. not in a wrestling ring or anything, yeah, are we? Exactly. I don't think. <laughs> Let's get ready to crowdfund. <laughs> Y'all ready for this? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. We could go on and on and on. But yeah, so this is, this is kind of fun. Uh, we uh, took, taken a couple of different approaches. I'm actually glad that we took the, what, what might be considered the non-traditional approach last week and how to actually raise money outside of these, um, sites. But they are getting a lot of buzz lately. Um, which can be a good or a bad thing. It's like a lot of things on the internet. It's like when something's fresh, like people are more like eager to engage with it. And I wonder, you know, if we're going to reach a saturation point, which is basically everybody's going to be crowdfunding something. But, uh, but yeah, what, what, what are your thoughts, Mr. Grizak? Well, before we get there, let's first off say that we are, um, in the process of still continuing, uh, trying to fulfill our obligations to give, our listeners, our fans, uh, exactly what they asked for. And uh, a f- month or so ago, maybe longer, it's been a while now, we asked everybody out there what they were most interested in, and we've been going down the list uh, to try to uh, you know, touch on all of the most requested topics. And uh, we've covered a lot, and now we're up to traditional crowdfunding. Uh, so first of all, let me say this. Uh, we'd like to thank everybody that uh, gave their two cents, And uh, we'd also like to uh, welcome all the new listeners today. Thank you so much for choosing this music marketing podcast as your music marketing podcast, because we know you have many music marketing choices out there. Anyway, I'm yes, your ears can only listen to one podcast at a time. There's so many choices (laughs) unless you put maybe one earbud with one show and another. That would be a little confusing, though. But we do appreciate you choosing us for your ears. So anyway, getting back to crowdfunding. Well, first of all, you know. Uh, what is crowdfunding exactly, Bob? Well, it, it is instead of uh, uh, either coming up with money from your own personal account or going to like an investor uh, or a record label. Um, basically, you're you are are reaching out to your fans, to the people that support you, and the reason it's called crowdfunding is you because you get a little bit of money from many different people, as opposed to like a bank loan where you go to one source and get the full amount of cash that you need, and then you owe interest and all this stuff. And uh, it sort of harkens back actually. To to a really old form of uh, art support, which is uh, the patronage model, which is where someone would uh, who had the money, either a government or a rich family, you know, in, in centuries ago, would support an artist. Um, so there were individuals who were doing this. this but this is more of uh, where you're spreading out. Um, yeah, you're asking a lot of people to contribute anything from a dollar to thousands of dollars each to support some specific project that you have that you want to get out into the world. 
Cool. And and now there's uh, many sites, and uh, the top uh, probably most popular sites, of course, will be uh, Kickstarter, which was that the original, Bob? I'm not sure. You know, sure. I don't know. I, I don't, don't know about the history of it, whether Kickstarter was first, because quite often the most prominent site necessarily wasn't the first one, but they definitely, I think... You know, with, with in any category, there are a number of sites doing whatever certain certain things. There's always like one that sort of pops up as the most predominant one. Kickstarter, I think we have to say, would be that one. It seems to me that the second one, it would be Indiegogo, seems to be the one that has the most buzz or notoriety. Um, and then everything else kind of falls away after that. Well, actually, no, uh, Rocket Hub is pretty popular. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Because I used that myself back in uh, back in June, and I was I, I was unsure. I, yeah, but a lot of people I found. Yeah, we, we I guess we can say that. But between the two of us, I guess I'm the uh, I did do my first ever official crowdfunding fan funding campaign back in June of this year, and I chose Rocket Hub. Um, my friend uh, Ariel Hyatt had used it like a year and a half earlier and had a really successful uh, campaign, and I because I think. One of the co-founders or something was a friend of hers, and I, I really liked it. I made a, a donation to hers and uh, kind of kept an eye on it over the year and a half and just chose it. Um, and uh, had uh, yeah, I had success with it, but I wonder, who knows, you know, in hindsight, whether if it would have been better to use a different platform or a different time of the year. There's so many factors, you know, that go into it. Check this out, man. The first uh, crowdfunding site came out in nineteen, excuse me, t- uh, two thousand five, called Chip In. Oh yeah, and then uh, Equity Net Pledge, and this is the first one I remember hearing about in two thousand six. There's one called Celaband. Do you remember Celaband? I do. Yeah, that was a music specific one. Yeah, All right. And then this this blows my mind. Indiegogo two thousand eight precedes Kickstarter, who didn't come out until uh, late in two thousand nine, followed immediately by Rocket Hub. Wow. 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 That is that is that is cool. You don't have to be first necessarily to be to be number one. And yeah, that's another thing that's happened where Kickstarter and Indiegogo and many of them are more general. Like people go there for all to fund all kinds of projects from, you know, they're opening up a, a retail shop to what, whatever It's not music specific. Um, but there are a lot of these sort of micro niche crowdfunding sites popping up. Um, and, and I guess some of them have come and gone, but Celeban and there were a couple of others that were music specific. I know there are some for authors like pub slush and some others that are. So it's interesting to see how this all, plays out um but so another thing we should point out that um they're set up differently with different structures different ways of paying you the fees that they take out of the money that you raise is different for each site uh but kickstarter is sort of well known for the all or nothing you have to set a dollar amount that's why it's really crucial when you do this to figure out what your dollar amount is especially when you use kickstarter because if you don't reach it you don't get any of the money Whereas some of the other sites like Rocket Hub, which I used, was not an all or nothing. You got whatever was donated, but they actually, the fees, if you don't bring your goal, were like higher than the fees uh, if you if you reached your goal. So there's still some sort of penalties or incentive for you to pick a number that you could reach. Wow. And, you know, it's funny you should bring that up because um, I, I'm also checking out a Wikipedia site here while we're talking. And... It lists the uh, top 68 uh, highest uh, funded uh, projects, campaigns ever, right? Oh, wow. And and a lot of people always in the music world, we always talk about Amanda Palmer, right? Right. Because Amanda Palmer was able to raise like like 1.2 million or something like that. Yeah, it was over a million. Oh, here it is. Here it is. It's $1,192,793. But what's interesting is, you ready for this? I'm bracing myself. She's she's only number fifty nine on the overall crowd uh, of, of the most money uh, uh, reported for a crowdfunding project. Can you believe that? Now, cool. what's interesting about her being number fifty nine is she's also the number one music crowdfunded person. So the the highest amount of money someone's made uh, in for music and crowdfunding was around a million dollars. Whereas if you go all the way up to number one, it's a video game called Star Citizen. They raised, wow, that's crazy, $55 million. Wow. For a- now, <laughs> you know, that really doesn't have a lot to do with what we're talking about. But I do want to say there is people always say to me and to you, Bob, and we hear it all the time. People aren't spending money on stuff. The economy's horrible. 
<laughs> right. And they'd well, always accept, yeah. You know, so, so, so don't believe it, guys, because some people out there, people just like, you know, you uh, helped fund a campaign for $55 million for a freaking video game. You know, amazing. And over a million dollars for a music album. So, you know, don't believe it when people say there's no money out there. What you really need to do is figure out how to motivate people to to want to be part of your project. And I guess that's what we're going to talk about next, right, Bob? Yeah, I guess we're just going to cover some best practices. This is from, you know, I did a lot of research before I, uh, you know, launched my own. And so I've been also been keeping an eye on the space as you have. And then some, some combine what I learned from actually running one. Yeah, I guess we can just run, I mean, in our limited time here, uh, we're just going to be able to touch on, you know, different aspects of it. Um, but I know that it seems to me, so first you have to have, uh, yeah, set, you have to have a, a specific thing that you're going for, you know, what's the specific project. It can't just be, you know, I need more money to pay my bills or whatever. Usually project based. I want to, you know, I'm working on a new album. We want to do a new tour. Um, you Maybe you want to purchase some equipment or whatever. It's going to make your, sh- you know, show or whatever that you're doing uh, on a higher, more professional level and you need your fans support. But often it's an album, you know, that's the kind of a typical thing. But it doesn't have to be. I mean, have you ever seen any creative uh, ways of raising money for something other than a recording project? Oh, my gosh. Let's talk about this for just a second here. There is a fellow by the name of Zach Brown. Ever heard of Zach Brown? Yeah, he was in a, a band. Uh, he's in a well-known band, right? No, that's that's not, that's the Zach Brown band. But oh, okay. No, this is a different, <laughs> different, different Zach, Zach Brown. Brown. Okay. <laughs> a cousin or something. Okay. Check it out, man. This guy decided he wanted to make some potato salad oh that guy okay yeah yeah and he asked for check this out ten dollars to make right. potato salad and he ended up raising are you ready for this fifty five thousand dollars to make potato yeah. salad now one of the things i took a look at his his actual crowdfunding site to to see what he did here one of the things that he did was he had really funny videos uh and his rewards, like, you know, here's the thing. Why am I going to crowdfund you to make an album I'm, if I'm just going to get a copy of the album? I mean, I could just wait until you make it and buy it, right? Or for that matter, you know, I hate to say it, musicians, but to stream it, you know, or, you know, whatever. And there's so many ways to listen to music. But this guy here uh, basically had the most incredible rewards, and I think we need to focus on rewards. Like, for instance, he says for a dollar – He says, with your help, we'll be on our way to a successful potato salad. You will get a thank you posted to our website, and I will say your name out loud while making the potato salad. (laughs) Okay, let's see, we're laughing, right? I mean, that's pretty funny, right? That's hilarious. And he had, check this out, 2,000 backers for that, right? And then for $2, it says, receive a photo of me making the potato salad, a thank you posted to our website, and I will say your name out loud while making the potato salad, okay? (laughs) Uh, And how many backers do you have for that? They had 1,200 backers for that. Uh, Now, this is where it gets crazy, and I'm not really sure how he's going to fulfill this. And if if we have time, we should talk about fulfillment because that's where a lot of bands fall apart. Uh, uh, seriously, guys, if you're promising something, you gotta, gotta deliver it, but check this out for $3 or more, receive a bite of the potato salad. I have no idea how he's going to do that. A photo of me making the potato salad, a thank you posted on our website. And I will say your name out loud while making the potato salad. Yeah. He's probably regretting that one now. Yeah. Well, actually, uh, no, you know what he did? And I looked at a follow up uh, article with all the money he made. He's having this big festival, uh, uh, event and it's and uh, he's got like all these people bringing potato salad and all this stuff and the potato growers of America and all this stuff and basically everyone that was in everybody that pledged up money they get an invitation now to come to the event to get their bite of potato salad oh cool so you know and then he keeps going you know but then what's interesting once he went way past his goal he starts setting up these crazy goals like uh uh, like a thousand dollar one, I'll do a live stream of me making the potato salad, you know, or, uh, it just goes on and on. And, but he, he engaged the, the people and made it fun and made it interesting. And I think that's a key ingredient that's missing most of the time when people are doing almost any type of marketing to, to their fan base is actually making them feel happy, good and excited and wanting to be involved in the project, you know? 
Yeah, I think well, the general thing here is to make them feel something. I mean, you can make them feel happy. You could also it could also be on a serious, you know, note, some heartfelt reason that you're raising this for charity or for something a personal uh, experience that you had or something. But as long as they feel something and connect with you in that way, you're gonna they're gonna be much more likely to support it. And so I just want to point out the potato salad thing has been in the in the news a lot lately, and also this guy that created this new like cooler i forgot what it what it what it was it was a cooler that had all these gadgets on it that raised millions of dollars too but uh, but the potato salad thing in particular is kind of a fluky thing it's a gimmicky thing and this guy just totally won the lottery when he posted this and it got noticed and started spreading you know but he he made it fun that's the reason um but don't think that just because you come up with a silly gimmick that it's going to spread and you're going to raise fifty thousand dollars as a result for the most part this is like for an album project and I think a really big part of it is in your pitch, and actually a one one element of all of these um, fan funding things is creating a video. You really, you they almost all have a really uh, engaging video, and they can be slickly produced or just you talking into the camera. But it really needs to be heartfelt. Um, and honest and telling people your big why. I, I might have covered this last week. I can't re- remember. But one thing that I did do that I think was successful with my crowdfunding, I was I was raising money for a, a, a book I'm working on called The Empowered Artist. And I really really make my video about the book. It was about the mission. You know, that I'm on this mission to inspire and empower creative people. This book is one way that you can help me, you know, raise the status of creative people and so on. So, but but figure out what that heartfelt why is and sell people on that vision not just hell i need money for an album would you agree absolutely totally you know in fact uh while we, while you were uh talking about that Ooh. i decided to take a quick uh peek at amanda palmer's <laughs> kickstarter here i thought you said you ran to the bathroom <laughs> no no no, no. <laughs> just take a quick peek okay peek okay. peek with a k that, that, <laughs> okay. yes not a not a not a you know Anyway, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but I'm noticing, you know, I, I went, like I said, to uh, Amanda Palmer's site. And, uh, you know, one thing that, that a lot of people, um, uh, sometimes uh, some of the best practices, they say, don't have a, a lower, like don't go below $5 or whatever. And I've noticed most of the most successful campaigns I've seen actually have uh, a dollar version. And uh, Amanda Palmer had four, almost 5,000 people pledge a dollar. Hmm. Okay, and that's pretty interesting. And for a dollar, all you got was uh, it says digital download of the whole album. Oh my gosh, for a dollar! Wow, for a dollar with bonus songs and Kickstarter exclusive content. That is amazing. Wow. Now see that there's something pretty special, right? And then uh, even when she gets into like her higher numbers, like even like there's uh, one here for like two hundred and fifty dollars. She's gonna have a party where you get backstage passes and stuff like that. I mean it's just crazy uh uh what what she did to to get the people involved, but it really was uh an event uh she was trying to create. You know, she was trying to uh uh make it uh something that every oh there's also an art book and you being an artist uh you'd appreciate that so uh in addition to the music you got uh the album there was an art book involved and i guess uh there was even a vinyl option too so yeah. you know there's she she did a lot of different things she just didn't leave it to uh you know i'm just making an album and give me money for an album you know right. what i'm saying this 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 project seems to be more about what she could do for you than what you could do for her and there's a marketing lesson that a that applies not just to fan funding, but to everything in your career and life, really. Absolutely. Now, do you have like uh, like a top five best practices or something, Bob, that you recommend for people that are considering fan fan funding? I, I have one well, I'd like to throw out first, if it's cool. Uh, go for it. Go for right. it. I think the most important thing, and I, I, I bet you will agree, is before you decide to do any fan funding campaign, whether it's uh, with you know Rocket Hub or Kickstarter or doing it on your own, I think you need to decide which uh, platform you're going to use and why you want to use that particular platform uh, and make sure you understand the platform before you you jump into it yes and compare and I, and, and I bet you some of the links that you found there have uh, yeah have the, the list of them um, but yeah just check out make sure you're aware of the fees and all that stuff and and um, and weigh the, weigh the pros and cons so some some people say that the all or nothing thing creates more urgency like if you're really getting close or you're 
um, I don't know, seventy percent of the way there. That you can inspire people by knowing I, if you know it's it's an all or nothing. If I don't make it, I'm not going to get anything, and it motivates more people. I don't know, you know, um, that probably is the uh, case. But I I went with the uh, I get the, I get the money no matter what. Um, but uh, but yeah, you have to decide on what platform and then what project you're going to a fun and then why you're doing it and what's that emotional connection that you're going to lead with what's the vision for why you're doing it and of course you need a commitment to say for, for however long I'm going to run this uh uh promotion this campaign that you are going to stay engaged with your uh funders and constantly be feeding them them new information now bob I know you took that uh that advice to heart and what did you do with your video series there <laughs> Yeah, and I think I mentioned this last week, but uh, yeah, what I did is I, I was trying to think of what can I do to engage people throughout. Cause I made mine a 30-day campaign, and there's different philosophies on this. Some people say, well, if it's twice as long, I'll get twice as much money. But I think research has shown that, that really the 30-day campaigns are just as effective as 60-day or whatever. Um, so I went with a 30-day campaign, and I had this crazy notion to post one video a day related to the topic of the book, which the book title was The, Empo- uh, the Empowered artist and so i uh, i did uh, 30 ways to become an empowered artist where I, I recorded like a five to eight minute video every day and posted it um up through the last day of the campaign and i think that did draw attention to it uh, you don't have to do a daily thing like that but yeah you do have to prepare uh and be ready to commit the time and actually start ahead of time so since we're talking about this what i would recommend is actually you start fanning the flames you know, you set a date you figure out let's say you, you decided you're going to do a 30-day cam- campaign you set the date ahead of time i think you can even create the campaign and the date and all that and not launch it until you're ready um on most of these sites this is but, true. Actually, yeah. I, I, I set up a, a Kickstarter that I was going to do two years ago, and it's still sitting there waiting for me to press the launch button. <laughs> oh, it's still, still sitting there. This is an FYI. There's a little storm moving through St. Louis. So if I, should I drop out? It's probably because I lost power. But just uh, let's just assume we're going to go. We're, I'm going to stay electrified here. Oh, my. Uh, um, but, um, but, yeah, I haven't disappeared really from the earth. I just, just uh, temporarily <laughs> lost my Skype connection. But anyway, uh, yeah, so I, I would pick that start date ahead of time. Like, don't do – I would not make the mistake of, like, going, okay, I'm going to start it tomorrow. You know, you really want to like, actually start – planting seeds and creating some awareness and some anticipation for it, you know, weeks ahead of time. Um, and then so hopefully, and also it helps to reach out to some friends and supporters, family members, whatever, and ask them to go on the first day and make their donations so that when the people that don't know you so well go there for the first time, there's already some initial funding happening. You know, if your general mailing list goes there and it's like there's zero or one person, it's not going to be as impressive as if, oh, there's already people funding this and it just started. You know, so really try to seed it with your friends, your family, your and your your super fans. You know, ask like spend personal messages to them to go that on that first day and get the wheels turning. Um, and so I, and I also heard that, uh, it's sort of, uh, if you really want to, if you're not doing a daily thing like I did, it helps to put up like a, a lot of, uh, emphasis on that, you know, the days leading up and at the very start of the campaign, um, then do another push, a big concentrated push about halfway through. And then you really put a lot of energy into those final, final week, those final few, few days where you're sort of <laughs> bombarding your email list and social media, you know, with that, um, and so those are just some initial thoughts on sort of how to run a, a broad broad view of how to run an overall campaign. Right. And then uh, get back to our potato salad guy, one thing he did really well was as he was reaching his goals, he set new goals basically uh, and and sent uh, new videos up. Like he was doing video updates, not just the original pitch video. But oh, wow. on, on his Kickstarter, he says, wow, well, we got all this. Well, now we did this let's shoot for that and everybody help me with this and that's like oh my gosh we did this well let's do that then you know what i mean so in his the- main video on his kickstarter kickstarter he actually would update that throughout the campaign uh yeah yeah there, well oh. actually there's there's a whole bunch of videos underneath the original one and it just keeps going so okay uh, okay and cool. i actually i actually heard that that is a really important thing to do from different friends of mine like i have one friend uh that uh, had a successful uh, Kickstarter campaign, his first time out of the gate, uh, just killed it and got the money to, to do his CD and all that stuff. And you would think he knew it all. 
uh, you know, did great. And then recently in the last year, uh, he ran a second campaign and it, and it, uh, through Kickstarter and he didn't reach his goal. So therefore like all that, you know, hard earned work, you know, he didn't, uh, right. get the benefit of it. And, and, and it left him kind of scratching his head. So it's my thought. And, and if anybody wants to argue, debate this point with me, <laughs> you could do that later today. Uh, at, uh, MMM chat on Twitter because, uh, after the show on Mondays, we have a live, uh, Twitter chat where we discuss, uh, what, we, what Bob and I talk about. We could continue the conversation there. And if you really dig in the topic, we keep going on our Facebook page, which is, uh, MMM chat Facebook group. And, uh, that's been pretty lively lately. So, uh, you know, just because we have a podcast, it doesn't mean that we, you know, you listen to it and you're done. You can, you know, keep the conversation going in real time today or, or during the week. Uh, so that's a lot of fun, but, uh, yeah. uh, but yeah, but even though he, uh, went ahead and did the second, uh, campaign, it, uh, it, it, it flopped, you know? So there is a, again, you can debate this with me. There's a little bit of a gamble, a little bit of a crap shoot. You know, sometimes it just depends how the, the wind is blowing. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. And, and, and what time of the year or, you know, maybe people weren't just as, as interested in your second project. For instance, uh, for the last year and a half, I've been recording a zombie CD. I know everybody's getting sick and tired of hearing it, but, uh, if I was to put that up for a Kickstarter campaign, maybe people would love it because, uh, people are into zombies. But then if my next one is about love and roses, I don't know. <laughs> right. I mean, there's so many factors that not only go into a Kickstarter campaign, but it's an overall career or anything that you do. You know, there's, there's just no, there's so many factors. There's timing. There's the specific project. There's the way that you pitch it. That's, you know, uh, and, and, and yeah, you know, sometimes the stars align and everything comes together and it starts spreading, you know, and then you just, that's why you just got to throw a lot of stuff out there. Not necessarily do a Kickstarter campaign every other month or anything, but, uh, just stay active and you're bound to, if, if like one or two, things out of 10 that you try actually get traction, you know, you're going to, you'll be doing pretty good with your career. Um, but if you never try anything out of fear, you'll never get to that one out of 10 or whatever. Um, I'd like to say a couple more things about the uh, rewards and, um, yeah, so, yeah, that's a biggie. So I know that, um, uh, and I can't remember if I mentioned this last week or just had this in conversations with somebody offline, but, um, but typically, uh, it, you know, when you, from a marketing standpoint, there's an old adage of you don't give to people too many choices. Like you want to give people a maximum of two or three choices, um, like on a, on a sales page or whatever, when you're, cause if you, if you have, like, you can buy this, you could buy that. And this, when you get too many choices often confuses people and a confused mind doesn't like to make a decision. Um, but there seem, but kicks, but these fan funding campaigns, seem to defy that logic where some of the most successful ones have at least like seven I, I, I don't have Amanda Palmer's or some of those that you mentioned in front of me but I mean I've seen as many as 13 or whatever you know different levels of support and there's a different dollar amount different set of but um, I think I limited mine to around seven maybe um, but I would try to, to go too nuts really put a lot of thought into the dollar amounts and what they get at each level and make it easy on yourself. Make most of the things the things that you can deliver digitally, you know, and don't wimp out on undervaluing. Like, you know, don't make a $10 thing where they get a signed copy of the CD in the mail because then by the time you pay, you know, spend all the time and packaging and all that. If people are supporting you, they're willing to pay a little bit more than what a CD would normally cost because you're, it's this is a supportive thing. They are, you know, they're doing this for reasons other than, oh, I'm going to buy a CD and that's not worth any more than... 12 bucks or whatever. They're doing it because they love you and appreciate you and want to help you. So it's okay if it's more than they would pay, you know, in a normal sit, sit, situation. Um, but make sure anything that you're mailing physically that you've got those expenses covered and you're not going to regret it later. Yes. I, I totally agree. And also, again, with rewards, <laughs> it doesn't even have to be something you have to actually tangibly give them or send them sometimes. For instance, and this is my favorite uh, Kickstarter reward of all time, and I'm afraid I don't really know how I'm going to word this to keep our G rating. But uh, <laughs> okay. let, me, let me put it to you this way. You know, you know, you're familiar with Martin Atkins, aren't you? 
Uh, yes. Okay, well, Martin Atkins uh, used to be uh, in a band with Johnny Rotten and Nine Inch Nails and Ministry, and, and he's a punk musician uh, that also is a marketer, has, has a few books out there. I can't even say the title of one of his books on our show. Uh, it's one of my favorite uh, marketing books. But uh, anyway, so he has a, a a passion for the F word, okay? Yes. And... Uh, and he's using the title of his books and Absolutely. interviews yeah, and yeah. whatever. Yeah. yeah, well, well, yeah, he's got a book called Welcome to the Music Business, You're Effed. Yeah. Okay, so uh, there you go. Now, here's the deal. Uh, in his Kickstarter campaign, which he was looking for $18,000 uh, to do his new book, and he raised $26,000, so definitely hit that, no problem. Uh, he had a dollar pledge, and I love this one, and it was basically um, – I'll use the word poop, but he didn't use the word poop, okay? And he called it give a poop. Uh, was it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Give a poop, buy an F. <laughs> and basically what he said it was, if you give me a dollar, I will add the F word one more time to the book. <laughs> oh, I get it. Okay. Get it. All right. All right. And it says, he helped me break the world record for having the most F words in a book ever published. That's awesome. <laughs> okay. And, and, then, and yeah, now, oh, go, go. Okay. Go, go and, right and you will get your name in the book as a thank you. And then, but the $5 pledge is killer. Buy a cluster F. <laughs> and I will put five Fs back to back in the book. So that's hilarious. Listen to us. We're having a great time talking about it. But see, yeah. To, to the right person, this can be really, really. Li- oh, oh! There's one last one. I just got to tell you, it says save an effing tree, mm-hmm. and then for for ten dollars where you get the digital download. So I think that's pretty cool too. So he's appealing to the tree huggers there by yeah. s- saving the effing trees, <laughs> so th- and this works for him because it's part of his brand. I mean, you wouldn't just do that just to do that. Go oh, work for Martin Atkins. I'm gonna, I'm going to do it too. Uh, but but it's part of his it's his, his normal way of speaking. You know, yeah, and this is what he does. Yeah, yeah, and so he milked it. He did, you know, and uh, that that's a hilarious. So yeah, what can you do that's fun or heartfelt or authentic to your true nature as a person as an artist your identity you know um and make it and make it fun like i love another thing that that you can do that's totally you can't even deliver digitally what you mentioned the potato salad guy who said i'll speak your name or utter your name as i make it you know uh i mean that's yeah i don't know so there yeah get creative make it easy on yourself provide value don't undervalue the things that you're giving at the different levels and just really be careful when you're sending physical stuff and and then what happens if somebody's in in a foreign country you know and you have to ship it internationally you know just keep those things in mind and this this takes some thought so don't rush this process exactly and when you're figuring out your rewards you got to as you said you got to keep your uh shipping uh uh, in mind and also don't forget when you're figured let's say i need ten thousand dollars which you know whatever a thousand dollars whatever the number is remember you're not going to get that whole ten thousand dollars there's going to be a percentage taken out so you're already getting less than you're asking for okay so and, and make sure that you can deliver your rewards and still create the product you're asking them the money for you're asking them asking for so in other words whatever it is you need let's say you need five thousand well you might need to raise you know six seven eight nine ten thousand to actually uh deliver everything that you're promising that you're going to deliver you know what i'm saying so yes please 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 keep that in mind as you're going along where are we on time today i have i think we, we're, we're probably we yeah, we think we need to wrap this puppy up i don't know if we want to go uh if this warrants a second one or if we've kind of given a good broad overview i think we've covered the basics all right hold on a second let me just see where we're at here like- uh okay Oh my gosh, we're we're thirty minutes already. So yep. <laughs> okay, well, I, I really don't think that we have a lot more to add at this point. I think what we could do is, uh, and everybody, welcome to the brainstorming session again. Uh, is let's uh, put some uh, links up on the um, show notes to these websites that we've been mentioning. You know, the wiki and whatnot, and maybe Amanda Palmer and the potato salad. So we'll, we'll get those links up there. And uh, let's also remind everybody that. Uh, if you're enjoying the show and you want to talk specifics, let's uh, all get on Twitter today uh, at 3 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. Use the hashtag MMM chat. And uh, please, uh, if you want a, a chat room experience, tr- try Twitter chat. It's great. 
And if you can't make it to the chat today, but you still want to get into specifics and uh, have some debate and conversation and brainstorm with other like-minded musicians and and uh, music marketers, uh, please uh, jump on over and ask to join the uh, MMM Chat Facebook group. So uh, yeah, what do you got going on, Bob? I know uh, uh, this weekend, this past weekend, you had an incredible, fantastic awesome oh it was uh, fantastic it was off the hook (laughs) you know man i i I had planned to go and and because of other commitments i'm actually in the studio right now work work believe it or not working on the zombie cd still oh you know by the time that thing comes out man it'll be like you know there'll be real zombies walking around but anyway so so it went fantastic and uh if people that didn't make it to the uh, workshop or seminar is there a way for them to uh get some of the benefit of it do you have any products or services or anything that uh, have to do with what you covered this weekend no, I would like. That. I just I didn't even plan on plan on this, but yeah, I would like to take. I would. I want to really beef up my. And I'm asking. Here I am asking our listeners and our fans uh, for their support, but not. I'm not asking for money necessarily. <laughs> I, I am. I am. But, uh, yeah, you are. Okay. Well, Billy's got his tip jar out. Um, I would really like to to uh, beef up the live workshop component of my business. As much as I love doing, you know, uh, you know, communicating online, it's and and I, I really I think there's so much value in gathering a people, a, a group of people, like minded people in the same room, and uh, you know, uh, exposing them to principles and having them apply them to their own. Um, careers and what and whatever so i really want to take this sort of creative entrepreneur workshop on the road so if you know of a school an arts organization um a any a, a local songwriters group or some kind of cr- cr- creativity meeting and they have a budget as i can't travel for free um but um you know let me know go to the buzzfactor.com click on the contact link and get in touch with me let's start a conversation about how I, how I can bring this workshop to your city or to your group to your school um and so yeah that, that's one, one way that you could really help me and a lot of other creatives who would who would benefit Absolutely. We're not just talking music here. We're talking uh, book uh, publishing, art, uh, yeah. and, and any creative people. So Bob, yeah. Bob is the man. He is the gold mine of, of information. He's kind of like the uh, – uh, what's that thing that they uh, – Indiana Jones was looking for in the first book there, uh, the first movie? The Holy Grail. I'm yeah, not- yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> oh, it. Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am the Holy Grail. Come to me and I will show you the secrets oh. of the universe. Where, where, where do we find you again, Bob? the buzz com. that's when i'm not sitting on a mountaintop sounds great man <laughs> and of course i'm just lowly old billy grizak the music marketing <laughs> mind at music market mind on twitter and uh, i have other things i want to talk about but i don't want to rain on your parade today so bob uh, that we'll just give you all the thunder since you have so much thunder right now down there in <laughs> st louis that's right and uh we'll see you all at the tr- uh, twitter chat today uh hashtag mmm chat and on facebook at mmm chat and uh, I think we're done here. I think we're done. So long, folks. Have a great week. Talk to you soon. Send me money. (laughs) (laughs) Bye. All righty then. (laughs) Cool. Are you still there? Excellent. Now would be a good time to visit hostbaby.com for your free 30-day trial, of course.